The Ravens just beat the Browns on Monday Night Football 47 to 42. And what a game. I mean, oh my goodness. Just crazy, fun, exciting, hard fought. I mean, that game is why I love football. The, the, the final 10 minutes, really the entire fourth quarter, uh, was just wild. And it was chock full of good storylines and great plays and scoring and oh, just twists and turns and so much fun. I mean, I, I really, I, we've had a couple games like that. I mean, there was a, there was a Browns-Bengals game that was awesome earlier this year. We got that, the Hale Mer- Murray with uh, uh, Kyler Murray and the Buffalo Bills. Uh, and then now we have this game. And I think this game might be the best game all year. It was just so much fun to watch. Reminded me, actually, of the Monday Night Football game a couple of years ago with the Rams and uh, Kansas City. Patrick Mahomes, Jared Goff, bunch of scoring. It was like 50 to 55. And I want to start by, I just, I want to gush about Lamar Jackson. He, he's just so much fun to watch, and he's so awesome. And it's funny, literally, what, Saturday, I did a topic, you know, talking about how, how and why I believed Josh Allen was the best quarterback from the 2018 NFL Draft class. And uh, look, Josh Allen's having an outstanding year. He's playing very, very well. But I will say he's never had a, like a superhero type moment. I mean, Lamar Jackson ran out of that tunnel, won the game for his team. And the whole night was just Lamar Jackson. It felt like putting a team on his back, making play after play after play after play. And I, I really can't point to a game where Josh Allen has played like that in his entire career. And I know that, look, Lamar's a former MVP, and I don't know, the more I think about it, maybe the entire debate, who's the best quarterback from 2018, does it even matter? And, and then how do you even determine who's best? I mean, a lot of people would say Lamar, Bills fans would probably certainly tell you Josh Allen. Uh, I think it's clear they are the two best from that draft class so far. And I, I mean, I don't know, like, it, it sounds like a silly debate in my opinion, and I do think, I want to just look at the crazy numbers Lamar put up last night because he was 11 for 17 passing with 163 yards and a touchdown pass. But he also ran nine times for 124 yards and two, two more touchdowns. And even crazier is that before that final game-winning drive Lamar had against the Browns, he only had seven completions the entire day. So seven completed passes the entire game. And then he had four in a row on the final drive. You know, one uh, one play pass was a spike into the ground to stop the clock. I mean, I I just walked away very impressed. And I, I, I just think, man, when Lamar was leaving college, a lot of people, myself included, he, he won the Heisman at Louisville, had a great career in college. And a lot of people, again, I'm included in this, this group of people. I, I, I believe this. A lot of people said this, that Lamar could not run like he did in college and succeed in the NFL. If he was going to run in the NFL, it wasn't going to work. He had to learn how to do other stuff. And he's developed into a great passer. But he also, the one thing we were all wrong about is he, he's running exactly like he ran in college and doing it again and just doing it at a very high level. And it doesn't really matter. It feels like there were long stretches in that game where it felt like Lamar Jackson doesn't even need to throw the ball. And I was like, well, okay, I was wrong. Everybody was wrong. Oh, yeah, by the way, when he needed to throw... Bam, Lamar, Lamar made great throw after great throw after great throw, won the game for his team. And uh, I, I think, you know, I don't really even feel bad about being wrong about Lamar Jackson. I was very skeptical. I wasn't sure. Part of why I don't feel bad is because we've just never seen a player like him before in the NFL. I mean, I think people literally don't understand how quickly the guy gets to full speed. It's like you snap your fingers and he's gone. And I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. Like, even on like a, a simple six-yard run, he gets the full speed like instantly. It just blows my mind. And I mean, I swear, he's like the best athlete in the entire NFL. Oh yeah, by the way, he can throw. I mean, it's it's terrifying. It's crazy. Uh, I was reminded of how great Lamar Jackson is last night. Again, you would think he won the MVP. I would remember. Um, I mean, that the, the touchdown pass he had on fourth and five. And I want to really kind of lay the groundwork to give the, what's the, the context for this moment. Because... And first of all, the fourth quarter started with us, the audience, learning that Lamar Jackson had just ran off the field, down the tunnel, into the locker room. And suddenly, Trace McSorley is the quarterback for the Baltimore Ravens. And you're like, oh, wait, what? Well, what happened here? And not really even for one drive. Trace McSorley played for two whole drives. And we're told Lamar Jackson has cramps. And then we see a video of Lamar Jackson, like, waddling down the tunnel into the locker room. And, I mean, like a waddle, was it a shuffle? I mean, I don't, I don't really know how to describe it any other way. 
But everybody sees that video and we all go, Lamar Jackson has to use the toilet. I mean, that's exactly what it looks like. And we're like, cramps? Bull honky, no way. I, 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 I even wrote in my notes and, and I changed my mind. It's pretty funny. Immediately, I was like, can you ever convince me that it was, quote, cramps? And he did actually convince me. After the game in the post-game press conference, Lamar Jackson clarified what happened. And, uh, you know, by the end of the game, you know, first of all, the game had ended. I was watching it. My girlfriend finished college last night, so I paused it for about an hour. We went and got, uh, got her a drink and had a good time. And it was nice. Um, but I read the headline that Lamar had denied the toilet theory. And I, I read, read it on my phone and I went, no way. Like, he, he's lying. Of course he's going to deny that. But if you actually watch the video and watch the, the full interview... Lamar's explanation was convincing. It makes sense that, you know, he described what he did when he left the field. He described the cramps he was having uh, before leaving the field. I will say, though, it, it's a really fun thing to believe. It, it's more fun to believe that he left the field and missed most of the fourth quarter because he had to use the toilet. So believe what you want to believe. I don't think that's why he left. I think he really did have cramps. But, uh, I mean, it's just it's fun to believe. Uh, I mean, even the careful waddle, if you watch that video of him walking down the tunnel— if you've ever played football and worn cleats on concrete or on any surface that's not really grass or turf, it kind of makes sense. You go, okay, yeah, it's hard to walk in cleats. You want to be careful. I mean, if I'm Lamar Jackson, I am extra careful of my legs walking down a tunnel in cleats. So I, I understand it. Uh, the waddle is explainable. But, it, I mean, look, the point of all this is that it leads me to fourth and five. On third down, it was like third and two. The Ravens' backup quarterback, Trace McSorley, he gets – uh, caught in the backfield, his knee buckles. Uh, now it's fourth and five. The Ravens don't have a quarterback. We're like, is it the emergency quarterback now? What's going to happen next? And uh, meanwhile, it's fourth and five, ball on the 44-yard line, tie game 35-35. And bam, suddenly, like, riding on the back of a horse almost. You're like, where did this guy come from? I mean, it just, it was like the, the heavens opened up and Lamar Jackson just kind of fell out of the sky. You're like, suddenly Lamar Jackson's back. He runs out of the tunnel and you're like, oh. Well, this is going to happen. And he, he came right back into the game, fourth and five, and throws a 44-yard touchdown pass. It was like the the craziest. I mean, he, he really did run out of the tunnel like Superman. You're just like, okay, I guess the Mars back. And it was just uh, one of my favorite moments of the year, honestly, where it was unexpected. It was a surprise. It was crazy. It was just so cool. And uh, he throws this long touchdown pass. And you're like, okay, I guess the Mars back. And I really can't say enough how just great of a game this was. It was so much fun. I saw on Twitter that Brett Coleman wants to do a film room episode about it. I heavily encourage that. Hey, dude, that's that would be amazing content. Brett, if you're watching, go make that video. That'd be amazing. Um, and I felt this a couple times this year where, uh, you know, we had Baker versus Joe Burrow. We had Josh Allen versus Kyler Murray. We had Joe Burrow versus Justin Herbert. We had Baker versus Lamar. These great games with matchups between young quarterbacks make me think about the early days of Peyton Manning or Drew Brees or Tom Brady or even Big Ben or Phillip Rivers where did people realize what they were watching like 20 or 15 years ago? The early days of Peyton Manning, the early days of <laughs> Drew Brees or certainly not in San Diego do people think Drew Brees would become what he became or Tom Brady. I mean... I love watching young quarterbacks play well, and I encourage you, when we get games like this between Josh Allen and Kyler Murray or Baker and Lamar or Justin Herbert and Tua, like whatever young quarterbacks you want to put in there, guys who are most more than likely going to become greats in the NFL. I mean, they're going to be at some point the top quarterbacks in the league, if not already to some of them. And I just hope that people enjoy what we get to see in the next couple of years, I, I think a lot of, I hope people really appreciated Peyton Manning and Tom Brady and the prime of those, that rivalry game and those years. But I can't encourage people enough. These rivalry games, these, you know, Browns, Ravens, Browns, Bengals, uh, you know, any game between Deshaun Watson and Patrick Mahomes. I mean, enjoy these matchups. They're incredible. They're fun. And I just hope people realize what we're watching. We're just watching incredibly high level quarterback play. It's so much fun. And I got a couple more takeaways from this game. Number one, Marquise Hollywood Brown, uh, the Ravens receiver, had a couple drops. And that's got to stop. That cannot keep happening. He did catch the long touchdown pass. I'm glad he hang on, hung on that time. But we've seen Hollywood Brown catch, you know, drop a couple passes this year, and especially in that last game. 
and that's he needs to show up for his quarterback. And I don't know if the Ravens need another receiver to help pair a match, give him another guy, you know, another dynamic duo. I don't know. Um, but the Ravens are I, I need to see I want to see more from Hollywood Brown. Now, I walked away from this game feeling good, actually, about Cleveland. And I don't know how you watched that game last night and still question the legitimacy of Kevin Stefanski, the Browns head coach, and Baker Mayfield, and the Browns in general. I walked away uh, impressed and encouraged, and I understand Baker had a costly interception. Uh, It set up a first and goal from the one-yard line for Baltimore where, I mean, he basically, Baker had an interception that handed Baltimore a touchdown. It might as well have been a pick six where he needed to see the edge drop into the throwing lane. If he did see the edge, uh, then you can't throw that ball. I mean, it's what, a five-yard hitch? And that's not worth the interception and the touchdown for Baltimore. Um, but I will say that was Baker's first pick in five games. And I know people have a hard time. When a player gets better and makes improvements, people just can't see it. They really are stuck in viewing a player or a person the way they have been in the past. I mean, quit a job and change your life. People will still view you as the guy from five years ago. It's it's hard anytime when you change your life, I encourage you just understand people around you and people observing you are going to have a hard time viewing you as what you are now compared to what you used to be. And I think Baker Mayfield is a different quarterback today than he used to be. So I, I am, I'm open to Baker Mayfield growing and getting better. Uh, And other than that mistake, I thought Baker played a phenomenal game. I mean, I really, he had that mistake, that costly interception. uh, But I was really impressed with how Baker played later in the game, especially Uh, The Browns had three touchdown drives in a row where Baker played his best football when Cleveland needed him to play the most. And I, I mean, he took a 35 to 34 lead, then responded with a minute left and tied the game 42, 42. He had that beautiful throw down the left sideline to Donovan Peoples Jones. And uh, I just walked away feeling encouraged and impressed with Baker Mayfield going, okay, like I, the coach is great. Uh, the team around him is pretty good. He's making throws. He's getting better as the year has gone on. And uh, I, I just, I hope Baker handles the loss well. Losing to Baltimore the way they did, that's a painful, painful loss that I, I, I hope he just, you know, takes it in, grieve a little bit, then move on and, and just keep playing good football. Uh, because we've seen Baker grow so much this year. I think, you know, maturity-wise, I think as a quarterback, I think in every aspect of his life, he's more mature and much better. And, I mean, I really was impressed that even leading up to this Baltimore Ravens game, did you notice Baker said nothing? Just totally quiet, all business. Uh, I I appreciate that. That's what he should be doing. And probably, I think he's learned some lessons there. And we've also really seen how good Baker can be with a great coach, which Kevin Stefanski is. So I... Look, I, if the Browns ever get rid of Kevin Stefanski, it's going to be infuriating to me because, I mean, they had Bill Belichick years ago and they fired that guy. It's like, don't screw it up again. You got a great head coach. You got a quarterback who I like and you got a lot of good players. Just keep building and keep growing and be patient. And uh, I really hope that Baker's rhythm, rhythm isn't screwed up from losing this game to Baltimore. Now, the final thing I want to say, I want to give a shout out to Justin Tucker. He hit the game winning 55 yard field goal. And I, I want to ask the question. I feel out of the loop a little bit. I don't know what people on Twitter are saying and what I, I just don't know. Is the general consensus that Justin Tucker is the best kicker in NFL history? I mean, I I know he's not near the end of his career. I know people love Adam Vinatieri. I know like Morton Anderson gets a lot of respect. Uh, but what's the general consensus on Justin Tucker? I'd love to know. Uh, if he's not the best kicker of all time already, He's definitely in the conversation, in my opinion. And I would say, I mean, the same way I think that Patrick Mahomes is the most talented kicker, even though Tom Brady has all the records right now, Tom Brady, Drew Brees. Um, I know, I, I'm sure that Justin Tucker doesn't have every all-time kicking record. I don't think he needs to, to be the most talented, most successful, most accurate, uh, most dependable kicker in the entire NFL uh, and NFL history, by the way. And so I, I just want to give a shout out to Justin Tucker. He's unbelievable. And uh, please feel free to send me feedback. I'd love to know what you guys think of Justin Tucker uh, and hear if I'm crazy or if I'm the only I, I don't think I'm the only one there, though. I, I would think that a lot of people would agree. Yeah, he's like the best kicker ever, right? Just asking a question here. I'd love some feedback.